This is one of the most compact pew pew factories in Satisfactory. This factory can produce every type of rebar for rebar pooper and ammo for ammo shooter, as well as all types of nobelisk. Also, this factory includes packaged turbo fuel for vehicles and jetpack use, and fixed incinerator to generate fixed coupons or remove unwanted items. And yep, this factory includes nuke nobelisk production, so you are totally covered in gamma radiation department. You may ask, do I really need all those boom boom options? Well, for example, stun rebar turns rebar pooper into solid support tool, while pulse nobelisk is a rocket jump movement enhancer rather than actual boom boom canister. Also, this factory is completely made from vanilla blueprints and fit into one vertical stack of four blueprints. Making connections between factory blueprints is as easy as plopping several dozens of conveyor lifts on the exterior of the factory. Also, this factory is part of my blueprint based modular personal storage. Nevertheless, one can totally use this factory as standalone factory with some exterior adjustments. Or you can go for my personal favorite option and combine it with bio waste processing module into ultimate exploration factory. So, in one tower you can have everything to fuel your hard drive hunt and exploration and everything to convert gathered materials into useful items. Today in this video, I would explain how this ammo factory is made. I would explain extra built-in functionality that is responsible for the semi-automation. And I will go over complete setup for my personal storage system. This is the last part out of 4 videos. So I want to have uncut and undivided versions for the whole setup of full modular storage. Chapters and timestamps are provided for ease of navigation. And as usual, my blueprints are available for free. Check out the pinned comment under this video for the full Morial storage system. These have been rather big mega projects that have taken better part of a month. Every module have taken something about 12 hours to plan, create and troubleshoot in the game. And well, there is always even more time spent on the script, voiceover, video editing, subtitle creation and publishing side of these projects. Huge thanks for everyone who is tuning in for my videos. I doubt we will hit something about like 10k subs before the end of the year, but well, man can dream. But in any case, like, share and subscribe. So without further ado, let's check out internals of our pew pew factory. Alright, so this is the full list of items that are being produced in this particular module, in this stack of 4 blueprints. And the ratios are not the exact ratios because, well, schematic over here is not exactly helpful. And this is one of the cases where actually going for the 3D layout in the game would be way more explanatory than actually explaining the schematic. And schematic do not include everything in this particular module. So, most important things over here are our imports. We are importing crystal oscillators. We are importing actually wood leaves and mycelia, not the biomass itself. We are importing high-speed connectors, after that we are importing encased uranium cells and aluminium casings. Obvious reason to import majority of those items is the space limitation. Manufacturer is quite a big machine and majority of those items require extra manufacturer and well extra logistics for that said manufacturer. But there is another reason, for example high-speed connector and aluminium casings. So this module will have the processing unit which is basically industrial storage container with sushi belt and bunch of smart splitters. I can input one of the product items into this industrial storage container and convert this item into well pew pew ammo type. It can be homing pew pew ammo or maybe it can be turbo pew pew ammo. Very simple concept. With this thing in mind we can avoid any power switches, any extra power circuits and still have the selection. Obvious advantage of that is well I can just reduce amount of items I am producing previously. For example I can reduce production ratios of smokeless powder. Obvious disadvantage to that well if I want to produce both both my production ratios would not be 100%. There are several really important recipes, for example, turbo heavy fuel and compacted coal. This combo allows to use the refinery instead of like manufacturer or blender. Using total of three refineries in the whole stack is way better than using like two and one blender or one manufacturer. It saves a lot of space and a lot of, well, logistical issues. Another alternative recipe that is well essential is heavy oil residue. Uh, this is basically like a great recipe to be honest. This must have recipe in every factory that actually use 
oil. So there's that. And another one is steel canisters. And the whole reason for that is, well, because I want just to export polymer resin. And well, producing just extra steel ingots for steel canister is not an issue. All right. So this is the full stack in the game. Obviously, the four levels for blueprints. One, two, three, four. And we will start from the middle one. We will start from the level two. And the reason for that is, well, because over here we actually deciding the actual ratios for the rest of the factory. We are deciding the ratios for, well, our raw resource intakes and we are deciding the ratios for our production of actual pew pew ammo and nobilisk. On level 2 we have total of 3 refiners and first of them is converting crude oil into heavy oil residue. I do not overclock anything over here because well 40 heavy oil residue is more than enough. After that we have obvious thing for production of smoke less powder and over here I am required to overclock this to 200% because well otherwise I will not be producing near enough smoke less powder. This ratio is more than enough and this consume only half of heavy oil residue. So even with that overclock, we still have half of heavy oil residue left to produce our turbo fuel over here in second refinery. So we are converting a total of 20 heavy oil residue in 16 turbo fuel, which is more than enough to produce our package turbo fuel and our turbo fuel pew pew ammo. So how this three refineries actually define everything else in the, well, the whole blueprint factory, whole blueprint stack. It's quite simple. For example, over here, I am producing only 16 turbo fuel, so I need to only produce 16 empty canisters to produce total of well 16 package turbo fuel. After that we have compacted coal which is well pretty straightforward. I'm only producing 16 turbo fuel so I need only 16 compacted coal. After that we have very important assembler for the black powder. I already required to have 40 black powder to produce 40 smokeless powder so I'll have the leftover of 35 black powder. I do not really want to have extra assemblers over here so I'm just overclocking this to 250%. Not ideal but well it actually works. What is next? Well, the next thing that actually require the black powder itself is Nobilis production. So over here we are producing normal Nobilis. And as you can see, this is basically limited by the ratio of the black powder by the amount of black powder that I can produce. All right, so here's the thing. I'm producing a total of 17.5 Nobilis per minute. And this is not enough to produce everything else at 100%. Also, this is not considering that I actually want to store this type of the Nobilis. So yeah, this is not nearly enough. I think I need to have like five per minute more but i'm not doing that why well here's the thing for example we have our gas nobilisk over here with the biomass then we have our pulse nobilisk with the crystal oscillators after that we have total internal production of well cluster nobilisk and finally we have the well our gamma radiation with import of encased uranium cells and here's the thing so unlike the items to produce your machinery or to make space elevator parts or to unlock tiers you do not need all those boom boom canisters at the same time you are just walking in the cave and then you suddenly see the cat, you are scared shitless, you throw your new knoblisk, you press the button and you are not using anything else because you are dead. You are not using all those items at the same time, so you do not really need to produce them at the same time, all the time, at 100%. So you see the point, you do not really need those exact ratios, you just eyeball things, you know, you just produce enough to have like maybe two or three production lines at the same time, not enough to produce them at like five production lines, you know? And this principle applies to pretty much everything, for example, pew pew ammo over here, and yes, I'm using those words because I don't want to trigger YouTube for no particular reason, because it's crazy, but whatever. Smokeless powder over here, 20 units per minute, and as you remember, we are producing only 40, and I'm also using smokeless powder all over here so we have 10 more over here and then 10 more over there but we still need five more for our new knoblisk production do i need to produce like 45 smokeless powder per minute well probably not because i'm completely fine with 40. And the whole system, the whole import thing, where I actually import in the finished products like uranium cells, crystal oscillators, aluminium casings, all those things on the legend over here, they are being dumped over here into ammo processor or just simple industrial storage container. And after that, we have the sushi belt with a bunch of smart splitters. They basically separate all the required things into their separate belts. And every single smart splitter have the overflow setting. Every non-native item basically will overflow into the protection bin. This is like huge 
huge U-turn to reach the protection bin. And the thing is, smart splitters, it's a bit more convoluted than, well, just splitting the things. For example, over here I have my biomass production. So I have the leaves, I have the wood, and I have the mycelia. I don't know why I'm saying there, but whatever. So there are a total of three types, and in some cases you will be inputting like the whole container of leaves. To avoid like clogging up the system or just uh, flushing everything into the protection bin with the overflow setting, I have the buffer. I have buffer in form of industrial storage container over here for the leaves, one more for the wood, and one more for the mycelia. Same goes for the crystal oscillators, for the encased uranium cells over there, and same goes for the things like I don't remember, but you get the point. Also we have the fixed incinerator, which is basically this, you know, awesome sink being connected to the container, nothing special there, but still I think. So there's that. And now let's go over the whole layout of the machines, because well, schematic is not really useful, but if I go over every single machine, you kind of can recreate this factory on your own, or maybe take your own spin. So let's go, the level number one. Over here we have Keterium ingots, then we have Copper ingots, after that we have our Iron ingots, then we have our Steel ingots, uh, obviously this result in production of Iron rods, uh, then we have Empty canisters, then we have Steel pipes, after that we have the Quick Wire from the, well, our Keterium ingots, Bunch of Logic, one extra manifold over here for production of Copper sheets, total of Reconstructors over here, obviously we're clocked to much our production ratios, after that we have our iron rebar production over here, then we have crystal quartz or quartz crystal, whatever, but it reached shatter rebar over here. Then we have our stun rebar with the quick wire and iron rebar once again, and this is it for the level 1. After that we have the level 2 over here, refinery number 1, heavy oil residue, then we have turbo fuel over here, and after that we have smokeless powder. Uh, this require obvious input of our black powder production over here and input of compacted coal for turbo fuel. After that we have package turbo fuel unpackager or packager and after that we have level 3. Level 3 have our pew pew armor over here, then we have AI limiters for our new knoblisk and over there we have the awesome sink. After that we have second floor of his manufacturer for the pew pew turbo ammo, then we have the home in pew pew ammo, one more manufacturer over here for the explosive free bar and after that we have level number four so the final level is just new knoblisk nothing special just buffered for the well crystal oscillators over here and bunch of buffers for wood leaves and mycelia for constructors over here so this is the biomass constructors over there and finally we have this level with assemblers one assembler over there for the nobilisk and three assemblers for everything else one for the gas one for the pulse and one for the cluster so it is quite simple so this is the whole layout of machinery As you can see over here, we are dealing with total of 24 blueprints for the full module storage. There are two groups, and first group is your modules that are aligned horizontally with the letters from A to F, and obviously then we have vertical stacks, and vertical stacks are defined inside each module with a level from 1 to to four. Every single blueprint have the unique set of connections and all connections are done through conveyor lift holes and in some cases they would be also required to connect the pipes but this is more of like an exception there are I think like total of five blueprints where we are using the pipe connections. Also there are power plugs and those plugs will be connected vertically. As you can see over here we are not connecting anything horizontally because this is two separate power chains. So every single blueprint have the unique indentation and unique exterior so connections in between between modules are a bit different, but the general principle is the same, you just connect conveyor lift holes and nothing else. And well, if you have the pipes, obviously, you just connect the pipes. Final level have the least amount of connections, and over here we have just conveyor lift holes in the gap. The general principle, once again, is the same, you just connect the conveyor lift holes. General idea when you start constructing the factory like this is to have the solid foundation, and usually you can use your foundation as a sandwich layer to hide your raw resource connections or your imports. In general, I do use at least 8 meters of height for my sandwich layer, but in some cases I also go for the 12 meters or maybe 
maybe even higher. There are several very important tools in update 8 when you are placing the blueprint. First of all, you can add blueprints to your hotbar through, well, your blueprint menu. You can just press the button and this thing will appear on your hotbar. Very nice feature when you place several blueprints of the same type. First of all, there is the arrow that indicates the front of your blueprint. Pretty straightforward, we want to align things. And then there is notch tool. If you press the button H on your keyboard, on English keyboard, you will lock your hologram in place. So right now it is in one place. And now we can adjust position of this hologram with the arrow keys. Also there is an option to move it half steps when you hold control button. So you hold control button on your keyboard and now you can move this blueprint in the half steps. But for this particular case it is not necessary. We will move it in well the single steps not the half steps. Alright so we have placed our module A. What will happen when we want to place module B? So we select our level 1 module B and as you can see over here in the default build mode uh, well it takes a lot of time to actually position things and even with the notch tool it is not really convenient. But there is another build mode for the blueprints. You can press button R on English keyboard and now you are in build mode blueprint. And in this mode every single blueprint in the game will snap to each other. Very powerful tool. But still we can see the gap. And this gap is due to the painted beams because well the painted beams they have the hitbox of their own so we need to use our notch tool with button H and now we need to bring our hologram inside of well module A by placing this factory like that we basically have everything flush so here you go this is how you align your factory horizontally all right so now we want to make our vertical stacks so first of all the default placement mode uh, it once again is not really helpful when we snap to the blueprint build mode well we can just snap things vertically which is really handy when you are making vertical stacks so here we go the level two now let's go for the level three and after that let's go for the level four and as you can see everything over here can snap so over here we can just snap level 2 for the module B. The actual thing, the snapping point is the, well, level 1, so we do not need to use the notch tool to bring the whole blueprint into the aligned position without any gaps. So same goes for the level 3. Only thing you need to make sure is your well, the arrow, the blueprint face, so it is aligned with all your conveyor lift calls. And in this fashion, you basically can just construct everything. So let's go for the level 4, check out the alignment with the arrow and just place it on top. So here we go, this is the way how you construct the full factory, full stacks, full 4 levels. Alright, so now we want to connect a lot of things to each other, a lot of blueprints vertically. And uh, well, with the hover pack, obviously it would be really easy, but the ladder is a tool that you will be probably using at first, especially if you are plopping this factory like at tier 4, 5, 6, you know, uh, before you have your hover pack. A lot of things can be just connected from the ground, for example, like here, there, but when we go for the final level, well, you need to be on this level to actually connect things to each other. And the trick about the ladder, well, you can use it backwards, so that works. So here we are at the first indentation. General rule of thumb, just connect the power lines vertically first, don't connect anything power line wise horizontal because this is like the separate chain and after that just use mark for lift everywhere also there is an audio cue when you connect conveyor lifts to each other conveyor lift holes just listen to that beautiful sound and you will be just gucci with all your connection obviously there are two sets of the connection one set of connections on the one side and another set of connection on the other side and everywhere all the conveyor lift holes are aligned to each other so i double checked everything when i was testing all those blueprints so you should be fine you just need to connect those conveyor lifts the second indentation is very straightforward once again you just connect your power lines over here over there over there this is just well direct continuation of the power line before and over here once again you are using mark for logistics mark for lifts the final indentation is where you want to pay a bit more attention obviously the connection points are still there but they are a bit hidden on the back side well of the painted beams and inside of the gap so yeah you need to look up closely and also it's not the same as previously because well uh, you know, like higher you go, less amount of connection you have because, well, we already produced a lot of materials in previous blueprints and we are just sending them 
downstairs. Good question is how do you connect the blueprints to each other? And this is sort of straightforward. We have this main power line over here inside our modular storage. And if you select the dismantle tool and select the blueprint mode with the R key, you can actually see where are your blueprints. And obviously there is no connection in between A and B modules. And we need to make the power connection. So we take power line and just connect it to the power outlet on the other side on the other blueprint. Now we need to connect everything to our mains power, the weld power. And this is done basically by well, just plopping another connection over here and just connecting to our main power grid. So here you go. This is how you connect your mains to the factory itself. Every single blueprint have the legend on the level number one, the description of what you want to actually connect and import. This is very straightforward, nothing else to say over here. All the connections in general would be on the left side if you are facing the blueprint face. Uh, obviously it will be flipped in the module F because it is just flip on its axis. Unfortunately, this is my like oversight, but well, you know, one blueprint is not a criminal thing. Once again, over here, blueprint number A, it is bio-based processor so only connection over here is your water and every single connection over here is labeled with a bright label so you can see the connection point even without flashlight but if we actually activate the flashlight you can see this is once again your conveyor lift hole and once again this is blueprint b this is blueprint a so over here we need to connect water now we go for the copper iron uh, then we have the things like limestone limestone obviously you can see over here we have some load balancing with two separate connections in one single blueprint and the sole reason for this is just not to use the mark 5 logistics how do you make the connections to your foundation layer to your sandwich layer obviously over here i already have the one connection for the iron and general rule of thumb just make one resource first and then go for the second resource type so first you make your conveyor lift to actually align your conveyor floor hole then you place your conveyor floor hole then you delete the lift and then just make the actual connection with your iron ore for example so here we go the connection is over here and now we can just go down below into our sandwich layer and over here in the sandwich layer you can see all your connection points for the iron so you make your iron first and in this manner once again you can make everything pretty well straightforward In some cases, Blueprint will have the extra functionality. Here we have Fixed Incinerator, Protection Bin, and BioS Processor. In general, there is a legend that describes the extra functionality. Just go here, you put the items that are designed to be put there, and those items will go into the processing unit, into Sushi Belt with a bunch of smart splitters, and they will basically be converted into the respective materials. Protection Bin is over here just to protect the BioS Processor, the Sushi Belt from non-native items. So this is like the huge u-turn fix it incinerator is very straightforward thing this is basically industrial storage container that has been connected to the awesome sink also there is a total of like three extra power switches in the whole factory and every single one of them just disable one of the resources just to increase production ratio of rest of the module and well if you think about this at some point this heavy module frame container will be filled up with heavy module frames and those production ratios will go up in any case also there is a level of synergy in between the blueprints in between the modules for example module f and module e have some synergy so we can connect actual polymer resin to the processor or just uh, well manually import the things over there and this thing will just convert the polymer resin into polyester fabric so there is that also there is always the legend as i said before the legend is responsible for everything that is being produced in this blueprint in this module and once again for example over here we are producing empty canisters this is, doesn't make really a lot of sense when you think about the empty canisters because I'm already producing empty canisters in the module B but if for example we take the module F which is your weapon production and you take the module A which is your bio waste processor well bio waste processor is using liquid biofuel production and that require empty canisters so there is the level of synergy there and if you never exported blueprints you will need to do this manually you need to go to your system disk users your username add data local factory game saved save games blueprints there your game session would create a folder once you have blueprints unlocked in your progression and have created first blueprint every blueprint consists from two parts .sbp file with parts and items and .sbp cfg file with text description and color settings and well there's the end of the video so thank you very much for watching have a nice one and until next time yakis out